Okay, so life update. Power chains. Power chains. Power chains. Okay, so those who don't know, um, I've had braces. September will be six years. Yeah, I said that. Six years. And for those of you that do want to know, like, who not to go to, I go to Howard University Ortho. So don't go and um they told me two and a half years when i was 15 i'm 21 now so you you pretty much can guess how things went but when i went for my last appointment i told everybody i better be getting my power chains today because if you have braces or if you know anything about braces getting your power chains means that you're so close to getting your braces off because it's basically a rubber band that like compresses all of your teeth together and it's going to remove all of the spaces that I have. So I'm just really, I can't even say relieved because having braces, I can't even say it's taught me patience because I would be crying in the actual office about how frustrating the process is when they keep saying like this is this is gonna be a, a little bit longer than I thought but basically I had to ask and ask and ask my parents for braces for a while like from the time that my canine from the time that my canines started growing in first of all my canines were up here literally they're up here and I told my parents, like, at this point, <laughs> it's it's like a jaw thing. It's not just like aesthetic thing of like, yeah, my jaw. Um, it's not like an aesthetic thing of like, oh, I just don't like the way my teeth look. It's like the way my teeth are growing in. Like, it can't be good that they're up here. So I like talked to them and talked to them and talked to them. And then we finally went for my consultation. And then on the day of my consultation, I remember I like vlogged in and everything. They were saying like next time, basically they made it seem like my next appointment, I was going to be actually getting braces. And that is not what happened. So that was frustrating. And then I had my bottom row of braces for like three years by itself. And the entire reason I got braces was for the top row so to be asking for braces for years then to finally get them and then the braces don't even go on the intended problem area is so annoying so then I have my bottom braces for like three years and I had a gap and my canines are all the way up there and what I realized is that my teeth were all the way shifted to the left on the top row then on the bottom row they were just perfect they're so perfect that they were asking me uh have you had braces before that's how perfect the bottom was so i don't know why they started with the row that literally needed no attention but they started with 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 the bottom then they pulled four teeth out I believe it was two premolars on the top and two premolars on the bottom. And they just proceeded to just play, just play, just play, just play. And if I could go back, I would just be doing child labor and get a job and pitch in for us to go to somewhere that's more expensive because the headache and the drama of me taking the bus all the way from where I go to college, all the way to Howard on a monthly basis, just for y'all to be like, you're almost done, you're almost done for freaking two years. Like every time they say you're almost done, I'm struggling to not roll my eyes because I just feel like you're lying. <laughs> I just feel like you're lying to me and I'm gonna need you to give me an actual month on when this is gonna be done because it's really it's really not cost effective to be doing all this traveling 
and it's just it's just really annoying so yeah that's what's going on with my braces so i got power chains um i had something else i wanted to say about my braces but i honestly if i forgot but um why did i turn the camera on Oh, so my productivity today. So today I I have been feeling like, first of all, let me just preface this by saying for a person my age, I'm not on my phone that much. I'm more on my iPad or on my computer watching YouTube or listening to podcasts. Like, I don't even watch Netflix, Hulu, any of the those apps. Like, the only show I watch on TV is All American. That's it. So, I'm not even on my phone that much. But I feel like my quality of life can be, it could be improved so much by prioritizing the time that I do have. So... Today marks the first official day. I've really been doing it all weekend, but the first official day of me not getting on my phone or interacting with people over technology until the afternoon. So I really intended it for it to last until 12.30 this afternoon but I didn't end up picking my phone up until 2 30 and I woke up at 8 30 so with me waking up at 8 30 and not touching my phone until 2 30 I was able to wake up get some breakfast make myself some morning tea um I was able to meditate I was able to do four and a half hours of my administrative work um what else did I do? I was able to get some things knocked off my checklist, all while just listening to podcasts and music mixes on YouTube. And I know it's definitely going to get easier and easier because it honestly wasn't that hard. Um, it wasn't that difficult because it's funny because the time went by slowly, but it also went by like a little quickly like it's already basically three o'clock in the afternoon and I did all of that stuff so I really am liking how this is going so far and I think also going to bed my bedtime is eleven thirty. honestly I could I could make it 11 but I don't think my body like even with me going to bed at eleven thirty last night um I didn't go to sleep for like 20 minutes after like I was like okay it's 11 30 like I was just sitting here like trying to like force that to happen so yeah I think my body doesn't get tired until after that time but I'm gonna have to train my body to just go at that time another weird thing about like my body is that whatever time I go to sleep at I usually will wake up like seven hours after that so I I'm also a little worried to um change my bedtime to like 10 30 or something like that because I'll be up at five I'll be up at six and some people say what's wrong with that no I need I need nine hours to be the best me eight hours minimum I need nine hours to be the best me so I can't I can't make my bedtime any I feel like 11.30 is a good time to be sleeping by. Like, the goal is to be sleeping by them, not like, okay, it's 11.30, let's wash my face now. Like, no, all that should be done. Showered, moisturized, face washed, ready to get in the bed, and turn on my rain sounds. So, yeah. Um, I guess this is all I want to talk about for this clip. Um, I will attempt to get more clips so this video can be a little longer. Um, yeah. So I remember what I wanted to talk about 
<laughs> regarding teeth a couple I really hate this middle part on me but um what I wanted to talk about regarding teeth is that I have teeth coming in I'm pretty sure they're my wisdom teeth and I think it's so crazy how we say that like babies and toddlers are teething so expect them to have attitudes but when adults have teeth coming in like are we not teething anymore i just never i just noticed that and i wanted to like mention it but before i end this vlog i want to talk about honey pot um if you didn't hear about the honey pot situation which you probably did um honey pot honey pot I can't even say is because I'm not even sure what's going on but when it came out it was a black owned feminine care feminine product company and a couple of days ago people started noticing that their ingredients list changed and there's a whole bunch of ingredients that were not there originally in combination with the fact that one product which was apple cider vinegar that was organic in the first formula that they were selling is now not labeled as organic um also the way that the bottle was labeled had people thinking that maybe the product in its entirety was organic when in reality it was only that apple cider vinegar slash that one product also the new label says that the product was created in the usa but it also has foreign foreign like ingredients or something like that so it's just like people are getting upset because it really seems like It really seems like black people, but specifically black women can't have anything to themselves. And when we do have something, it seems to always get monopolized by other groups or just blatantly taken away. And I saw, I only saw one video on YouTube about this so far. And the woman was basically saying, like, you don't owe, um, you don't owe, the company doesn't owe anybody an explanation. And, like, you shouldn't be buying things just because they're black owned. And it's like, I don't think most black people say, I'm just going to buy this product because it's black owned. But if you're walking into the store and you know that the brand always is not good for you and then you have honey pot right next to it on the shelf which is a lot more expensive for way less amount of product and you get not as much use out of it but it's black owned or black founded and it has healthier ingredients you're going to go with the black owned product and a lot of people that are you know saying oh well the company doesn't owe you an explanation the consumer it is definitely the consumer's job to do research on the products that they're using there's even apps where you can scan your products and it will tell you if it's healthy or not but the problem for me is that if i've been buying a product this happened to me and that's why when I did make natural hair content, um, I talked about this one Shea Moisture Deep Conditioner that I used for years. And it was the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil Deep Treatment Mask. I used that deep conditioner for years. I got it and I noticed that it just stopped working on my hair all of a sudden. Like, for the longest, it made my hair soft, it made my hair shiny, it helped with elasticity, and then one day I got it, and it just sat on top of my hair. And then I realized that 
Shea Moisture was going through their process of changing the ingredients to make them, you know, more accessible to people with other hair types. And it's like, to me, you guys not notifying us that you're changing the ingredients is harmful and it's a bit misleading because you're not going to pick up the um bottle and look at the ingredient list every single time that you go to the store to buy a product if you've been buying it for years you don't really expect anything to change and i did watch a video from the founder basically explaining like oh you know we decided to change some of the ingredients due to customer feedback and we put some preservatives in it to help your products last longer. I just want to make a disclaimer. I have never used Honey Pot. Um, I've used their pads before, but I didn't have a good experience. And I believe, did I try them twice? I think I tried, okay, I tried their panty liners and I tried their pads. And I didn't like them because the wings did not stick to my underwear. And I have like issues with other like pads not sticking or like it'll be like certain underwear where they won't be um as the, the adhesive won't be um as effective but for these like no matter what pair of underwear that I tried to wear these liners or these pads with they did not stick so I didn't have a good experience but um, as a person that like supported the company and stuff, I personally would have just enjoyed keeping the same product, keeping the same ingredients, and just issuing um, a notice on the bottle that said, due to the nature of our ingredients and lack of preservatives in the product, this product will only be good for three months post unpackaging. Like, from the date that you open it, you got 90 days to use it. And if you want to use it after that, and it's not up to the par with the quality, then that's on you. So, you know, black women, you know, we tend to be more trustworthy of other black women and them making products because there's so many ingredients out here. You know, even with relaxers, like, relaxers are target black women in a way because there's so many pre-existing conditions that are in our family lineages that chemicals like that will just spark you right up for your, those health issues to get triggered so um I understand both sides of the spectrum of the company doesn't owe anybody an explanation and I also understand the people that are outraged but Maybe the issue is that um, we need to, I don't even know if that, because I don't even know if that, I don't trust them, I don't know about the FDA, because I don't even want to say, oh, well, we should talk to the FDA to make sure that, you know, these business owners and these products, you know, have to go through more hoops and hurdles, I guess, but I don't even know if that's the case. I think it's just up to the discretion of the owner, and it says a lot about you. If you can't even make an announcement saying before, because I feel like the the video that I watched was like damage control to send out after the backlash. Like when you know something like you could have even said it like, hey, we're rebranding. We want to fix some of the products just to let you know if you see, you know, different ingredients on the shelf. Do not get worried. It's just because we're trying to make the product last longer. But when you do damage control after the fact and you don't like tell your consumers like we're changing this about this product that's been out for years, it just seems a little bit deceptive. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on the situation. If you do have an opinion, um, be sure to comment it down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog.